Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to a new season of Rams Revealed. I'm your host, J.B. Long, and our guest this week to kick off the 2023 campaign celebrated a 25th birthday this summer. He's now entering his fourth NFL season with the Rams since he was drafted on day three back in 2020 out of Clemson, where he was all ACC, of course, and went 29 and one as a starter. Tremaine, thanks for sitting down with us here on this off day uh, in Denver. By the time our audience catches this, the preseason will be complete and you will have turned your attention to week one in the Seattle Seahawks. So as you are about to make your fourth NFL roster, first of all, congratulations. I mean, drafted 250 overall. That doesn't happen for many people in your position. It's a testament to the work that you've put in. Appreciate that, JB. So two-time college football national champion and you've got a Super Bowl ring. That's a career worth of accomplishment, but I feel like in some ways you're just getting started in the National Football League. How do you feel about your trophy case and what you might add to it uh, the rest of your time? Well, it's 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 OK. You know, <laughs> there's a lot more that we can, you know, for sure add on. But it's really just a testament to, you know, the work I put in, people that believed in me, who's kind of poured into me, uh, family, coaches, friends, teammates, just the whole nine, you know. What about that sentiment that even though you're a veteran, I guess at this point, it feels like your career is still so young, uh, still growing in front of us because you've only played, I think, five offensive snaps because you've ended on on IR twice. And maybe we can start back in 2021. It was here in the preseason finale in Denver, wasn't it, where, where that year came to an end? What's it like being back now in this city where you have a lot of family history, knowing you don't even have to play this weekend to make this roster? Feels uh, feels weird. You know, it's kind of a full circle moment almost where, you know, this preseason and this camp has kind of gone similarly to how that one has gone. Um, but it's really shown that, you know, all the hard work and all the ups and downs, I'm still moving forward. I'm still showing um, steps that I'm going in the right directions. And that's a that's a good feeling for me. You know, that's a good feeling that I can have my family around me. I can have the support of my teammates to know that through all the adversity I've seen and all the things that I've kind of gone through, you know, I've never quit. My spirit is always as high as it's, it's ever been. Speaking of adversity, uh, 2022 brought another physical challenge, a fractured fibula in week two against the Falcons. That was on the second offensive play. It's actually the first. You heard it on the first, played yeah. one more mm -hmm. before you had to leave. I remember our hearts sinking that day, like in the booth, just watching that, knowing how long you had waited for that chance. What do you recall about that moment and how fulfilling to be back where you are now? Man, it was devastating for sure. I mean, you put in um, so much time, so much effort, you know, being moved across the line, learning different positions, just earning the trust of the coaches and teammates and then getting into that moment. It's over before it even started. So, um, you know, that almost put me in a position where I didn't know if I was, you know, if I was even up to play football anymore. Uh, it put a lot of questions on, you know, what am I doing? Uh, what am I putting my time into? What's important? And, you know, going through the rehab process over and over, keeping my family close, keeping my parents involved, it really just put in perspective that, you know, regardless of the outcome, like you're going to put 110% of what, you know, you're going to put 110% of what you believe into this, right? You're going to put all of who you are, regardless of the outcome, and you can live with it as long as you give it your best shot. And I kind of kept that in the back of my mind, every grueling recovery session, every grueling rehab session, watching them practice every day where I'm just kind of sitting here, you know, kind of being off, you know, ostracized from the team a little bit, but coming back here now and being, you know, the best I've been in my NFL career, I'm excited. What brought you back as opposed to walking away? I, <laughs> I have so much more I want to accomplish. You know, I have a I have a, a yearning to be great. You know what I mean? Like I wake up and I I say, what can I what can I do more? What can I be better at? And I knew for a fact that I didn't want to go out like that at all. You know what I mean? I wanted to put up the best possible version of Tremaine the world can see, and I think I deserve that. I think my fan, my family, my fans, my friends deserve that, and this team deserves that. Walk me through that transition you referenced uh, a lifelong tackle learning to play guard in the National Football League, like technically what had to happen to make that possible? How you see the game a little bit, you know? Um, I feel like um, a lot of people feel like the differences between offense alignment is just size or ability, but it's really just your, your knowledge. It's really just how you see the game and, um, you know, little things here and there, stances, intent, um, understanding the combinations. 
you knowing who to work with when, how, what, things like that. And most blocks on, you know, run plays start with the guards. So just, you know, I had a lot of help. I had some adversity in my own team. I mean, you got Aaron Donald right there. You, you got to learn pretty quick. <laughs> it's not a game. So, um, yeah, it's it was it was a it was a weird transition. But, you know, I've always been a competitor. I've always been a mm -hmm. baller and I've always prided myself that, hey, I can figure out anything. And uh, I'm still working through that now. I haven't gotten where I want to be with it, but I'm getting closer. So as a right tackle by trade, put yourself in like Rob Havenstein's cleats, right? Like mm -hmm. what does he want from his running mate on his left hip? <laughs> he wants communication. He wants relentless effort, violence for sure. And he wants somebody he can depend on playing and play out. All right, so violence there, the word that you use. This is something I've heard from Sean McVay, I think going back to the spring, that the disposition of this unit, the offensive line in 23, no matter who's in there, maybe bigger, definitely nastier, more physical. We're gonna have to see it to believe it, of course, starting in Seattle, but what preview can you give us? This offense line is gonna be the best it's ever been. I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, you know, we got <laughs> a little newfound um, energy um, just because of, you know, the, the feeling of competition, right? People feel like, you know, if you're on this team, Obviously, you kind of know who the starters are, but like in the offensive line room this year, we're like, you got to prove it. If you're the best, I don't care what you've done two, three, four years ago. Like if you're the best, show me. And that's competition all across the line. And I love that. You know what I mean? Because if you're if you're better than me, if you're whatever, OK, show it. Show it day in, day out. And that only gets us better, it gets the defense better. It makes the team better. And that is why we're going to put the best possible product out there. I'm going to come back to that competition in just a second, but who's driving that disposition? Like, is there any one individual who's setting that tone? You can raise uh, your hand if you want. <laughs> I think it's a little bit of everybody. I know Rob Havenstein for sure is, you know, voicing that all the time, you know, whether we're in the rate room, whether we're in meetings, whether we're doing walkthroughs or anything small, like we're trying to be the best. Like even if we're running the drill to drill, you know, he's trying to push people. Um, and that is, what you need, you need competition in every facet of the line for it to be successful. So looking ahead to week one, I'm still not certain who those first five are gonna be. Um, and I'm not even sure how to pose this topic to you because you've been in this first team role now for much of the off season program. Then the staff seemed like they wanted to test Joe Nopum at the position you've been holding down right guard. He has a physical setback that's prevented that from happening thus far, leaving things somewhat in limbo. So. Let's start with what's your level of belief. I can feel it from you that you are an NFL starter. Without question, without a doubt. No doubt about it. <laughs> that being said, how personally disappointed would you be if it doesn't necessarily happen week one, even if it happens at some point eventually in your career? No, I'm disappointed at all. I mean, I trust the opinions and the, and the, and the choices, decisions that all our coaches make, you know, because I know they're not just one off. I know it's not personal. It's for the best you know, it's for the best of the team, right? That is what we are doing here with the Rams, right? But, you know, if, if Joe's better, he's got to show me. You know what I mean? If, if he's going to outwork me, he's got to show me that. And if they believe that, then fair on. But we'll have to see. And you'll take pride in have been a part of that summer competition that elevated the entire group. Oh, yeah. Because if, if, if whoever's going to start in their right guard spot, they're going to have to outwork me. And that's not an easy task to do. So we're going to find them. External expectations have been a talking point ever since 5 and 12, right? Mm -hmm. But when you came to the Rams, expectations were really high, sky high for your first three seasons. Not so much this summer. Does it feel any different? No. No, we, we have our standards. We show up and we want to win in every game. That is our goal. We will dominate our competition. That is what we set out to do. Um, and the expectation hasn't changed. You know, we obviously have a younger team. You know, different things have happened in the past, setbacks, adversity, whatever. But the goal has never changed. The standard is the standard. And that's what we're going to abide by. And Sean McVay has told us that he thinks this past week, by the time, you know, this this podcast, this video cast, uh, 
errors was your best week of practice? Not just you individually, but the Rams got better more this week coming to Denver than they had the entire offseason. What optimism does that give you as you now get into a game plan? We're moving in the right direction. You know, whatever doubts, whatever offsetting beliefs that you had because we were young or whatever, not really sure where we were, those are starting to dissipate and we're starting to believe more, right? Mm. Um, there's obviously testing it against other people um, gives you a bit more confidence too, but just seeing individual players and spots get better and that giving more confidence to other players around them and seeing that kind of, you know, come together, you're just like, okay, we're putting this thing together and we're coming in at the right time. Hmm. It's pretty rare that uh, a fan base knows more about the person off the field than the player on. That's just kind of the circumstances that have defined your tenure with the Rams so far. But I love the contrast between your persona as a player and who you are off of it. And community service is, is something that a lot of us do, a lot of people do, but it seems to me that it's what you are about. Does that make yeah, sense? For sure. Let me quote Andrew Whitworth, who was the uh, Walter Payton Man of the Year in 2021. Most of the time, no one knows what Tremaine is doing, and that's the most impressive part. It's just who he is on a daily basis and wanting to make his community better. He shows up, and I think sometimes in life that's the best thing we can do, just show up. Tremaine Ancrum Jr. does that. So we could, we could go through the whole list, whether it's the Hollywood Food Coalition, the Boys and Girls Club in East Los Angeles, you're a supporter of the Genesee Center, a nonprofit, um, domestic violence intervention and prevention organization. I love the My Chemo uh, Ferry story. And maybe you can tell us about, uh, is it Jeff Pastrick? Am I pronouncing his name correctly? Yeah, your former coach, mm -hmm. the role that he played in your football development and also the inspiration that he provides for your charitable work. Yeah, um, you know, all of those, you know, all those causes are important for sure. Um, the My Chemo Ferry is for sure personal for me. It's, it's in a place that, um, Jeff was a huge, huge, you know, part of my football career. Cause especially coming into high school football, I'd actually taken eighth grade off. So I really wasn't sure, um, you know, how I fit into football, but then kind of being thrusted into a line position. And I had a lot of ability, but I didn't know what I was doing. I was like maybe 200 pounds. Like I didn't know what was going on. But when that, when I had that coach there, he believed in me and he kind of pushed me and he really understood that, you know, it's not about where you are now, right? It's about where you're gonna be and what you where you wanna be. So I took that and he challenged me every day personally and I was like, all right, I can do this. You know what I mean? And we took steps every day, you know, there were setbacks, there was this, there was disagreements, but for the most part, you know, he went out of his way to make sure that I was ready and that I, you know, competed to the best of my ability and I've carried that through my whole life, not just football, but you know, my whole life in every area. So, you know, being able to give back to a cause that was so, you know, that affected him and his family and me. So I was like, all right, how can I help? You know, where can I have an impact? And I think, you know, working through uh, Heather, uh, we kind of came up with this and we've been rolling with it. Hmm. I consider this a, a much watch, must watch story here on the Rams.com or YouTube, uh, our channel, wherever you might be taking in uh, this particular edition of Rams Revealed. Definitely circle back for more on the work that Tremaine has done throughout our greater Los Angeles community. You are Tremaine Ancrum Jr. I'd love to hear a little bit more about Tremaine Sr., especially because we are here in Colorado where he was all state in both football and basketball. He's a man. You can ask anybody around here. He was he was definitely the man. I think uh, in the name Ancrum, especially just not only from him, but our family just carries so much weight, so much pride. And, you know, my dad, you know, epitomized all of that um, through and through where he was raised and you know how he played in sports and who he was in the community and then his grandmother and his family. I mean, you know. My dad was a man. Went on to play for Hall of Famer George Raveling at USC in the 90s. Led the Trojans in rebounding as a sophomore, three-point shooting as a junior. Did you ever win a game of force against him growing up? <laughs> no. He was, he, he's, <laughs> he's, he was pretty elite at shooting, for sure. And he's now the head coach at your high school? Mm -hmm. Help me with that name. Mick? McKeatron. McKeatron? Yes, sir. High school. And you're from Powder Springs, Georgia, an Atlanta suburb. Mm -hmm. Your high school has produced some pros, NFL, NBA, WNBA, ESPN's L. Duncan too. Mm -hmm. um, but the one I want to ask you about is, is Jalen Brown. Did he coach 
Jalen in AAU? Uh, yeah. I read he, that. Yeah, he, he did. Jalen was part of the AAU program that we were all part of growing up. And, um, you know, Jalen was a, was a project for, you know, beginning stages of it. But again, that's a guy that doesn't quit. He's smart. He knows how to learn. He prides himself on outworking people and, you know, being, being one of the most fierce competitors. So, yeah, my dad was really with them for sure. Just signed the richest deal in NBA history with the uh, Boston Celtics. Five-year, $300 million super max. All right, we finish uh, Rams Revealed with a segment. We call three and out. Uh, after each episode, I make a donation to the Alley Rams Foundation on behalf of our guest. You have a ton of, of charitable interests, and we'll, we'll talk more about that offline and figure out where we can yeah. um, funnel our resources to continue what you're doing in our community. Uh, but these are meant to be lighter hearted questions, no wrong answers, just so that we can get to know you better. Okay, yeah. This is the uh, first road trip of the year for the Los Angeles Rams, first of many. So I wonder if you have a show, a movie, a piece of content that you would recommend to help us pass the time this year. Hmm. I think, I think the bear is pretty elite. Oh yeah. If you, if you, you got some time, that that show will have you on the edge of your seat, and it's all it's about cooks in a kitchen in a small restaurant. So you're you, you should definitely give yourself some time. I actually added it to my queue after driving past the billboard recently in Inglewood. So have you finished it? I have. Don't delay. It'll okay. it'll, it'll, it'll it'll blow you out of the water for sure. All right. Question number two. Favorite rookie so far? Favorite rookie. Mm, Steve. Yeah, big Steve. That guy. That guy can ball. He, he he's so much like natural raw ability. And he he's gonna be a baller for sure. Did you guys do a rookie talent show or anything? We've seen. <laughs> no, he tells some good jokes though. Okay. Yeah, he's got some jokes. If you see him, just just holler at him. And then bonus question: What's Stetson like in the huddle? Stetson, uh, <laughs> Stetson's so confident, even even when he like like read the play call wrong or if he's you know not sure, he'll be like, "We're gonna do this," and it's like, I like that, you know, especially for a young guy who's kind of figuring out. You could tell he was nervous early on, but now. He's really stepping into himself. Cool. Third and final question. How many games do the 23 Rams need to win for your new offensive line coach, Ryan Wendell, to shave that beard? You know what? <laughs> We're going to say 13. There you go. Check out the Google image from when he was a player for the Patriots, by the way. Uh, World-class mustache. You really? won't even recognize him, but it might be worth putting them up to it it's a man stash isn't it it's great it. it's yeah. it's tremendous and so is sitting down with you getting to know you better i've always admired the work from afar that you've done in your first three years looking forward to many more and your most healthy and successful year on the field for the rams all right tremaine thanks Jim. all right thanks for helping us kick off a new season of rams revealed it is an off day here in denver but i know more meetings for you still to come once again, thank you for joining us for a new season of Rams Revealed throughout this 2023 campaign here on the Rams.com, our YouTube channel, and all your favorite podcast platforms.